Hey Kay, welcome to Thirsty Thursdays, the long review. Well, a few weeks ago, um, I'm not even sure, it's been more than three weeks. Um, if you watched the short, you saw me do the neck pour of this Sagamore Spirit Rye. This is a barrel pick from uh, SLB Drinks. I am a patron over there on their website. I highly suggest you check them out. You don't have to be a patron, or you know, you can let me waste money and you can just watch the reviews um but uh so yeah over three weeks ago i don't remember the exact date i did that first one i was a little spiffier looking I had a tie and a sh nice shirt on so we're at the shop working we're cleaning um and it's time for the longer review so a couple of things so on that first pour that day i said oaky vanilla i said it's very rye forward and i said that on the palate that was on the nose so on the palate um, cinnamon meets wintergreen. So that's what I wrote, or that's what I said on that pour. However, since then, I have some notes here, and I probably tasted this with friend of the channel, Devin. Um, on the nose, I have written down sugar, uh, brown sugar spice. So that's a little different than that initial neck pour. On the palate, I have oaky rye sugar. So I'm not seeing that wintergreen that I had. So it'll be interesting to see tonight. And then um, for the finish, I have smooth and spicy. So what that means to me is that means I didn't get the Kentucky hug, but it's still got some spice to it on the finish. So let's see what we got a few weeks later. How you doing tonight? Put down how you're doing, or today, or morning, or whenever you're watching this. Put down how you're doing. Let me know how your Thursday's going. Are you thirsty as well? Or are you staying hydrated? Oh, so on the nose, on the nose, I'm agreeing more with my initial. Notes, I'm saying oaky vanilla. So I don't know where brown sugar spice came from. Maybe that's something that me and my friend Devin came up with when we were tasting this. Brown sugar spice. You know what? I can kind of get all of it. So when I first put my, put my nose in, definitely oak is the first thing I'm smelling. And that makes, well, let's see. No, this isn't a double oak. This is Sagamore Spirit Rye American Whiskey Barrel Select. 110 proof, so that's 55% alcohol. It is straight rye whiskey. Let's go ahead and read the notes that they have. It's a new, unique Maryland-style blend of seven-year-old straight rye whiskeys. Each barrel, oh, I wrote over part of that, each barrel of something rye is expertly blended with a low rye mash bill by our distilling team. No two expressions taste the same, and you are guaranteed to enjoy a one-of-a-kind product. The Sagamore Spirit Barrel Select program allows or showcases the uniqueness of our distiller's favorite barrels in each bottle. So that's kind of cool. So they try to make it unique with their stuff. And then, of course, with this bottle, um, the fellows over at SLB Drinks, uh, which I highly recommend you check out if you're into whiskey, um, you know, they've picked a barrel from that distillery as, as something that they wanted to offer to their Patreon people. So... So no notes from the distiller, and that's fine. Let's get back into this. We haven't even tried it yet. Let's get back into this. So I actually, tonight, and I'll have, to, I'll have to look up, maybe I'll put in the description how long ago I opened this bottle. Tonight, I actually agree with both notes. I agree with the original short that I, that I had, and I also agree with the notes that I wrote on the bottle. I do smell oaky vanilla, but I also smell brown sugar and it's almost like I it's almost like someone made a creme brulee but instead of regular sugar on top they put brown sugar and melted that um so so brown sugar creme brulee that's my new what I'm gonna call it and it does smell wonderful I do I do love it um I will be doing a blend soon of um several so what this is what I'm gonna do I'll let you know my plans um, so actually tonight here, I'll take, give you a little glance since we're doing the long review. I've already started cleaning stuff. Um, unfortunately it's less of a cleaning. It's more of a churning, which is, um, which is a hoarder, uh, a hoarder 
what's a, a hoarder term. So I'm not really throwing anything away. I am throwing a minuscule amount away, but I'm not really throwing anything away. I'm shifting where it's at so that way I have more room for stuff. So cleaning this out tonight. By the time midnight rolls around, this corner will be cleaned, and then tomorrow I'm going to start installing the back bar. So once the back bar is done, I'm going to start collecting the rye whiskeys that I have listed in my Infinity Flask because I love the taste that I developed there. Um, so the first one, I'm going to buy the exact bottles that I put in that flask to the best of my abilities. There's one bottle that was unique. I won't be able to replace that bottle, but I'm going to look at... Um, the proof on it i'm going to try to find out the mash bill as close as i can uh, to replace that bottle in the mix and i'm going to do um, a, my own rye blend and i'm even going to bottle it and um, if you're over 21 uh, maybe i'll have like a few that i give out to viewers i'll have a little contest uh of course you'll have to be over 21 if not i'll have to send you some root beer or something um but uh so a blend is coming very soon after the bar is put in and um, after that, so I'm gonna do that initial blend and get back to the taste profile that I like. Um, and to me, it, I'll, I'll review it at some point. To me, it tastes like it tastes like alcoholic waffles. There's a bread note, like a wheat note. There's um, there's a maple note. There's a butter note. It tastes glorious. So uh, I'm gonna do a blend. Try to get as close as to what I did in my in my rye blend, my rye infinity uh, flask. And um, we'll go from there. So then after I've done that initial blend and I'm happy with it, then I'm actually going to try to, because one of the components, at least one of the components is pretty expensive. Like the, the one is um, Angel Envy's Rye. And I'll let you know exactly what's in it. So you can blend it yourself if you want. Um, but, but one of the barrels is Angel Envy Rye finished in rum cask. And it's a little pricey. So after I do this first blend where I get the actual same ingredients to the best of my abilities that I can, uh, after that, then I'm going to try to replace some of the expensive whiskeys, rye whiskeys, with lesser expensive rye whiskeys. So we'll do a second blend, see if I can attain the same taste profile that I'm looking for without spending all that money. But it's just some fun things, some fun things. At least they're fun to me. Um, I mean, we'll do, I'll do a whole, I'll do a whole video on it. We'll, we'll mix it. We'll pretend we're mad scientists and mix, mix some whiskeys together, and. Uh, I don't know, come, with some, come up with something good tasting. And like I said, I don't care. I'm going to tell you everything that I mix in there so you can try it for yourself at home. And if you like it, great. And if you don't, um, email me at heyizzo at yahoo.com and we'll talk about it. Uh, but anyway, let's get back to the Sagamore. So so I actually agree with the neck pour, Oaky Vanilla. And I agree with my notes that I have on here, brown sugar spice. So let's see what's on the palette. Now on the palette... I had cinnamon meets wintergreen, so that's an interesting note. And then I, on the palette here, I have written oaky rye sugar. So the, so on the palette, what I wrote in marker agrees with the nose. Um, we'll see if we still get that cinnamon wintergreen taste in there. Still very smooth going down I don't get that I don't get that Kentucky hug on it and sometimes sometimes the Kentucky hug is fun but I don't get the Kentucky hug on it I I sure did get all of that I got a sweet sugar note I got a little bit of cinnamon and, and it feels like cinnamon punched wintergreen in the mouth boom just had just a little bit of that that's amazing so let's let's get in there again though I don't know if you can hear that. It's raining here in East Lake, Ohio. It, it's very, it's very sweet on the nose. I do enjoy that. Um, man, it's sweet. I like that. So I have set, so I have several um, Sagamore Hill Rise. So let me, let me just give, show you what I got real quick. So this is one. Um, it's when I picked it up, it seemed like it was rare, but it's been sitting on the shelf at my local liquor store, so it's not as rare as I thought it was. Um, so this is Sagmore Hills Double Oak, and I believe I did a head-to-head -head with um, with Woodford Reserve Double Oak, 
and I did enjoy them both. It would just depend on your mood. This is a little spicier than the Woodford Reserve. They're both very glorious with the double oak. And then, and then this is age for eight years in new charred oak barrels. So, so Reserve Series, I think this is a little more rare. I did just pick this up at my local liquor store. Um, so it seemed like it was a little more limited, but it was available. And then this one is still sitting there at my liquor store. So these are things that you can probably find near you. Um, so I don't know if, it uh, looks like Sagamore Spirit is out of Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland. Um, so you may be able, if you're, especially if you're on the East Coast somewhere, you may be able to pick that up. I don't know what the markets are like. So, um, But if you see them, uh, they're not the cheapest thing. But so far, I haven't been disappointed with any of the Sagamore Spirit stuff that I've bought. It's been very good so far. That's very interesting. It's just, it's just got a beautiful, sweet note. burnt sugar it's got the oak in there it, it's got some like spicy but sweet cinnamon and wintergreen action going on that's awesome um i would i would have to check i'm doing a very poor job about um getting you the prices that i pay for these um except on you know certain rare bottles you know i bought the expensive jack daniels and then got it <laughs> at retail price a couple months later um but uh, I personally would highly recommend the Sagamore Spirit line. Um, they've got, I haven't had anything I've tasted that's been bad yet. Um, so if you see it at a decent price, um, I, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it was like 55 to $60 for each of these bottles. One of them, of course, the SLB picks, uh, I had to get that online. So that included shipping cost and I tipped them. Um, you know, so that one is a little more pricey. That was probably close to a hundred dollars. Um, did I buy two of them? I bought two of them. So, so the first bottle was a hundred bucks. The second bottle was probably 65. Um, and then the other ones that I got locally were 60, about 55, $60. So, you know, not terrible, um, but not great, but Hey, you know, just find what you like on your bourbon journey and go with it. And if you find that you like similar things that I'm liking and, and actually, on, let's be honest, you go through my reviews, there's very little that I don't like. I do kind of appreciate everything for what it is. Um, but there's a couple. There's there's one that's going to come up. So here's one. I just recorded the neck pour today. This thing is $13. And, and it tastes like I mixed. Uh, you'll get the full review later, maybe next week. It tastes like I mixed Buffalo Trace and Paint Thinner. So, you know, for $13, it's not great. Now, when this opens up, maybe it's going to taste better. If I put it in an old fashioned, it's probably gonna taste great. But you know, so there's there's gonna be fun things that you find that you don't like. And you know, and maybe you'll buy a barrel from Amazon and put it in there and cook it. Um, but like what you like, don't like what you don't like. Don't let anyone tell you how to enjoy your whiskey. Uh, except please like it in moderation. And be responsible in your drinking. That's very important. Um, but, you know, each person's going to like what they like. Each person's going to taste different things from from different whiskeys. That's the wild part. Let's get a little philosophical on the whiskeys for a little bit. So so this barrel's very small. Let's see how many staves are in it. One, two, three, four, eight, nine, ten, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. So there's 24 pieces of wood in the circumference of this. And then you also have the wood of the front and the back. And then technically, I mean, well, this isn't in the whiskey. So you got wood here in the plug. You got wood here in the spout. So what are we up to? 24, 25, 26, 20. So there's potential of 28 different pieces of wood. Now, did that wood come from one tree? It's possible. Did that wood come from 26 trees? That's possible. So it's very interesting to think about the way a barrel's made. Now, your big old... Your big old barrel that they have in the distilleries 
Um, I, I've heard in av on average they have 32, 33 staves. And the stave is the individual piece of curved wood in here. So in, in those 32 staves, you have the potential for 32, 33 different trees being involved in a barrel. And I, honestly, if I was a cooper, a person that makes barrels, I would totally do my best to make sure that I had a different tree for every stave just to get different flavors in this. So 30, let, let's say they did that. Let's say they did 32 different trees for one of these barrel picks. Um, then you got 32 different trees. You got 32 different plots of soil that it's sat in. Uh, depending on where they're grown, you have potential of 32 different climates that the tree lived through. Um, different insects, different bacteria, different fungus, different mold, things that affected the tree differently each time. Um, so it's just fascinating to me. So especially when you get into the single barrel products, that's why, um, like with the Blantons, Blantons are a single barrel product. So the very first Blantons I bought was barrel 2888 from October of 2022. Um, and it was the greatest thing I'd ever tasted. And, but at that day I had bought two barrel, uh, two bottles rather. And so I thought, oh, this is wonderful. And I have two, so I can drink this one fast. I can share it with friends. I can, you know, do whatever I want with it. I still have another barrel, barrel, bottle, sorry. So I finished that first bottle and I cracked open the second bottle and it was from a different barrel and I did not like it as well. Honestly, that particular bottle of Blanton's, I appreciate an Eagle Rare more than that bottle of Blanton's. Um, I think I still have some of that bottle of Blanton's because it didn't wow me, so I'm not drinking it very fast. Uh, so it's just very interesting, um, the art and the craft behind the whiskey. Um, and, it, and it's just silly. It's just something silly that I think about when I'm sipping the different whiskeys. Like what, what they went through to become what I'm drinking is very fascinating to me. Um, what else? So that's all. If you do happen to come across a bottle of Blanton's from barrel 2888 from October of 2022, I am very interested in discussing purchasing that from you, unless you like it enough that you need to keep it. Um, but I don't know. So I, sometimes I, I uh, get lost in thinking about all the things that went into making a barrel and then all the things that went into making the whiskey, it, even, even the whiskey there. So bourbon's made out of at least 51% corn whiskey. Then they usually add rye, barley, or wheat, sometimes all four. Uh, even that, that grain could be, have been grown anywhere. So who knows what weather it went through in a season. Uh, depending on when it's uh, mashed and distilled during the year can affect how it tastes. It's just fascinating to me. So uh, I don't know if any of this goes through your mind when you're drinking whiskey or if you're just like, shut up, we need to just enjoy some whiskey. But those are my thoughts on whiskey. I just thought I'd let you know tonight. Um, oh, 18 minutes. This is a long one. If you made it through this, uh, please go ahead and just put drum set in the in the comments put drum set in the comments and you can either just write drum set or you can um find some fancy funny way to put drum set in your comment um but then i'll know how far you watched and uh, uh just for fun thanks for watching i really appreciate it i don't know why you're watching but i love it i love you thanks for hanging out uh yeah if you have any comments feel free to put the comments in the in the uh you know, for the video, you're also always welcome to email me about anything construction, anything whiskey. Um, we can discuss music, although I haven't been focusing on it on the channel like I wanted. Uh, but feel free to ask me anything about music. Um, I used to be really good at cello. I took six months of bass guitar lessons, trombone lessons, keyboard lessons. Uh, I dabbled in guitar. Actually, there's my bass. That's another project, hopefully coming soon. But it's got to happen after the bar here. Um, but feel free to email me, heyizzo at yahoo.com, and uh, I'll answer questions as best I can. If you have a project coming up and you need some help construction-wise, let me know what you're going through. I'll try to work on it. I've got some very special people that I need to do estimates for. Uh, those are coming up soon, uh, the leather store people. Uh, within the next two days, I actually have to get them some finalized drawings and pricings. Um, got some beautiful people in Philly that need their, their drawings and quotes. I am that's that's heavy on my mind even though I haven't got it done yet um, but if you have any any uh, projects coming up and you need some advice or some help please feel free to reach out and we'll work together as best we can 
Uh, so let's see. So today's the 26th. So I'm doing a blind flight with some friends on Friday, Friday night. I don't know yet if they're wanting to be videoed. So I might video and do, do a video on that. Um, and then Saturday, I'm on a Patreon only oh, blind, blind tasting. I don't think I can release anything of that, but I will record myself and then with the permission of the of the YouTube channel, maybe I'll post some highlights. Um, what else is after that? Sunday, I'll probably take a day off. Let's see, what's happening on Monday? On Monday, I will be working at the estate that I do maintenance at. And then let's go ahead and get back into live streams. So Monday night, uh, we'll, do, we'll make sure we do a live stream, either from here or from the apartment. Um, depending on weather and depending on how things are going, we will shoot for 6.30 on that. Let's see, that would be the 31st. If I have anything, it would be at 12.30, but I think that got canceled. So yeah, I should just be working a normal day and then we will have a live stream at night and we'll talk about stuff. We'll, um, we'll plan out the week. We'll talk about projects that are coming up. We'll see how your summer's going. We'll see how my summer's going. My summer hasn't been bad. I don't have any complaints. Um, we'll get back into some of the live streams because I know that helps out the channel. It gets, gets watch views and hours and s stuff and such. Um, all right, cool. And of course, I'm not editing this like usual. So thanks for joining me. And uh, I'll catch you guys later at Izzo's Place. And so, so somehow by Monday, Izzo's Place will have a bourbon bar. So I can't wait to show that to you. You know what? There we go. That's what Monday's live stream is all about. It's the bourbon bar tour. All right, cool. Thank you very much. Have a good evening.